Okay, Mike. Hey, folks, we're going to get to your calls. I know that uh, you, Whistle, and uh, Mike, and Robert, constitutional terrorist, and Terry and others are patiently holding on this Wednesday edition. But I'm always talking about Mike Hansen and the fellow he's got that does Mike Hansen archives. It's mainly a lot of new news stuff. Mike has got all the really good tapes of like me protesting the Klan and the cops pointing guns at us when we're protesting them, uh, the snipers, and just unbelievable stuff. So, Mike, for one reason you're here, you're saying send my crew down there. Fine, I'll send my crew down there to get the really good stuff and get it on there. I appreciate you guys doing it. And I was offering to pay your guy to do it. He says he does it volunteer. But how do we get all that epic Alex, stuff nobody's seen on TV? Alex, it's not like we hadn't been doing anything. You know, we've put on Mike Hansen Archives on YouTube... It's all about Alex Jones. No, I don't care about yeah. that. I just want the old stuff because I haven't seen it. We do have a Here's an example. My dad, I'm at my dad's house. And he goes, I found eight millimeter footage of your grandfather bird hunting. I've never seen film footage of my grandfather. He died when I was six years old, my dad's dad. And I said, well, go find it. Let me see. He goes, oh, I don't know where it is. I was like, <laughs> why did you just tell me about that? No, it's I not at all. I, I can have all the gold. People don't even care. Eighteen <laughs> years of gold. Well, we, you know when it's when, about about seven eight years. Yeah. Well, no, eighteen years ago, I I saw you at at um, uh, Access TV. I said that guy's going to be a star. Oh, well, these days, knock it off, Hanson. The first time I saw you, I said that guy's going to be. A star. I'm not. I don't want to be a star. That Liberty. Was, that was eighteen years ago, and. Uh, you're way beyond anything I thought you could. And I tell you, I had to tell you about that. Pierce Morgan. I was down at the beach with uh, some investors of mine, good friends, and we watched that interview, and uh, that was the best job you've ever done. Well, Mike, you've done a great job. Pierce you've been a star Morgan. for Liberty. That was great. I well, thank you, Mike. Mike, I want to get into your book that we sell, a Bohemian Grove Cult Conspiracy. I mean, this is a very well-written, thick book. If you really want to understand it with uh, a lot of top researchers that contributed to it, uh, very, very important. That's not why Mike's here today. But I tell you, Mike, uh, there is just so much. We, It's a side issue. I just saw your archive guy, and I was like, man, because you know what I did? I ended up just throwing away when I moved, like 13 years ago, all my original stuff. I was like, I don't want all this. I'm, You know, I cover stuff better now and just trash it all. all where they were taking old people's property oh. and where all that kind of stuff was going on. We have all. got to put all those old reports out because it's a great example you of... You have done a great job. Enough about me, Hanson. Alex. I got you here to talk about what you're up to. Well, you remember when you did this... Pro uh, how's your wife doing? Oh, how's your wife doing? She's good. She's doing great. I've been, I've been married almost 30 years now. How, what about you? Yeah, it's uh, it's about twelve. Yeah, twelve. Okay. Your kids and are all grown. My kids are all grown. So, I see, my five, I have a five year old grandson. Justin has a five year old. That's amazing. How's Crystal? And, and Crystal got married uh, last month. No, but see what it is, Mike. You used to, for those that don't know, Mike used to live in Austin, so I saw him all the time. We go out to eat. Now you moved my to Gonzales. Used to be in your dining room, and now you got this big warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> That's how little it used to be, even before your wife was. You were married. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, we were we were working together 18 years ago, and it's just amazing, you know, to look at this big warehouse. But then I'm so proud of y'all. But then you moved to Gonzales to manage a bunch of family well, property. In, in 2001, uh, uh, a month after 911, and I remember where where I was on 911 because I called you, Alex, and you were in the shower. I said something's going on. I said there's some planes hitting, hitting, uh, and your wife. Uh, uh, you know, said, hey, turn the TV on. No, she got me out of the shower. So yeah. I can say I was the one that told Alex Jones about 911. And, and, and remember the, the hate calls we got that day because the show from two months before re aired on Access? Yeah. Where I was saying they're going to blow up the towers. They thought I was saying it that day. That's right. And you predicted it three months before. Oh, yeah. By the way, Esquire has been uh, like trying to get me to fact check that because we don't have any way to prove that. But anyway, because I don't know where the a, tape is. A month after, I don't know where the tape is. You're gonna get all the gold. Where is that you're July twenty fifth show? You're gonna. I I have it. You're gonna. You're gonna get all the gold if it, it, it's all sitting at Nate's house in air conditioning, so it's not being ruined. And uh, I don't even care about all okay, that. It's just some well, of the tidbits. A month after nine one one, my grandma died, and then two years later, um, uh, my grandpa died. So. I bought their estate in Gonzales, Texas. Yeah, that's right. So that started me having to be in Gonzales a lot more and not, you know, help you as much as I Absolutely. Could. But I did help you for 14 years. Yeah, well, you've done a great job, okay. Mike. You know, and I tell you, Mike, it, it, this is the house I live in now. It's uh, my grandpa. Uh, Here, let me say it. He, he, that came from our farm. 
It's a hundred year old house. And uh, he, he cut it in half, took the roof off and moved it to town in 1959. Can you believe that? And we've been in business 60. I remember years. your grandpa Wolf. I got it. He was a character. Hold on, we're gonna come back and talk about Grandpa Wolf. I got pictures of him. Yeah, there he is. He was okay. a good old guy. And um, hey, hold on, we're gonna go to break, Mike. We're gonna come back. There's Papa Wolf with his overalls. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the InfoWars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happens. So check it out, InfoWars.com forward slash show. Hey, Mike, enough about me. Look at this photo of you. And I guess that's probably about like 1996, 97. But yeah, I've known you since 1995. So, so look, look at Time the Avenger. Years. Look at what me and Mike look like now. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, that's about what we look like when we snuck in Bohemian Grove. Oh, speaking of Bohemian Grove, look what I brought. Oh yeah, that's the shirt you wore that's in there. The shirt I wore. I'm going to put this in the Alex Jones Museum when y'all make one. Oh, give me a break, Mike. That's not going to happen. The, the, you bought me some clothes to sneak in there as the billionaires that's right well no that was the idea of john ronson he goes well you guys look like you know like you're wearing like sweatshirts and stuff you got to dress preppy yeah so we went and that's right you got that at eddie bauer that's right and and it's it's on uh secret you can go to go to mike hansen archives i have that secret rulers of the world on on the on the youtube it's a, i thought that was a great film <laughs> Absolutely, and uh, great YouTube channel. And I, know, and I know you and Nate are busy, but if you'll put, like, when I protested the Klan, the guy said, I'll kill you, and then the cops had the rifles on us for no reason, and then it turned out the cops were with them. Remember, I was like, why are you doing oh, yeah, that? The cops like, I'll watch you, I'll knock your head we, in. We have all that. All that incredible stuff. I mean, it's like, I mean, I can't even remember all the stuff. Well, I do. Listen, let's talk about what happened in Florida. And, and then we're going to get your dad and the shit. Well, I want to apologize for that Florida trip. And the tower shooting, what was that? Because I remembered that. I woke up in a, in a sweat the other night. Remember, you had bought a $5,000 camera, and the whole time we are in Florida, I didn't have the sound on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Alex. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Uh, Mike, Mike, but, Mike, but Mike. thank God we had, the, Mike, we had the other guy with us that had the sound. Well, I had the cheap camera. The, yeah. but, but Mike, you, did, you got most of it. Yeah. Anyways, sound. anyways, that shows how far we've I come. I apologize for Listen, all that the was, mistakes I made. Brooksville was in 2000. Tell people what that was like when we're being chased by the dune buggies. Yeah, yeah, the dune buggies. Yeah. And then the guy jumps out, starts lighting the fire. Well, the, the, the scary part about it is, you know, we get there. Somebody had canceled our, our reservations to the rent car, to the, to the hotel room. Then somebody broke in the hotel room. This is, this is what we had. And then just so happened, a guy drove in from Texas and met us there. And then we're like, no, we don't want your help. So then later, marketeer. and then he jumps out of the bushes. Yeah. And he was like, look at a Navy SEAL. I mean, it was just like ridiculous. Well, he was, he was in the Army before. I think it was the Navy. And yeah. he showed up to Waco, too, when we rebuild in Waco. There's, there's Alex when he was, when he, when we. <laughs> well, I got to know you're going to bring all this stuff. Well, you told me you were going to go over old times. Well, yeah, I, I yeah, yeah. Is it, what is that, Waco Tribune Herald? Yeah, there I am. <laughs> And, and by the way, uh, you know, I, I go to the uh, memorials every year, and this lady from Virginia, she started a museum, and uh, she took an old black school in downtown Waco and remodeled it and made a Waco museum in there. But what she's missing is she's missing the rebuilding of the church. So I, I'm, I plan on... All this stuff that I have, all the pictures, the rebuilding, I plan on donating that next year. That's a good idea. Or where it it will be, and I think that you need to start a museum for. You're the one that always starts this stuff. You're the one with Joe Campana. We tried to fix his house, and they bulldozed it, so we built him a new house. We're and then it was your. And then I'm like, well, okay, we'll help you fix your leaky right, roof right here. of your shack to have your memorial. And next, you had us build the Davidians a new church. Yeah, here's Joe Campana, the veteran. And remember, they sent provocateurs in to try to stop us doing that. And that was that you know that was a city record, without permits. Thirteen days building a new uh, a, a, a new house. I mean, from ground up. Mike, enough. Uh, 
What do you think is the craziest thing we ever did? I, I remember we went to San Antonio and the Delta Force had done that drill. We were I on think the, sneaking into Bohemia Grove. Remember, the but, thing remember when they pulled did. the gun on you because you wouldn't turn the video over? <laughs> remember that? And, and then I screamed and hollered the whole time. I'm a veteran. You can't do this to me. <laughs> can't get any screaming. But they never did take it. Take us to jail. That was at Fort Sam Houston, wasn't it? Was on the edge of it. Yeah, they came off the yeah. bank because we, we were videotaping the. They blew out all the windows. Yeah, the Delta Force blew uh, to go hospital or something and blew it up. Yeah, yeah, we we did a lot of things. It, it's a wonder I'm not both. We're not in jail for the rest of our life for all the stuff that we. We did a great job. You know, Steve Lane in Tennessee is uh, teaching construction. He's a professor, and uh, he, he's calling all the time and doing a great job. Uh, a little bird told me he's going to yeah. run for run for office. Oh, well, I've ran for office three times. <laughs> yeah, you talked me into it for about a week <laughs> until I saw the rules. I think you could. I think you could have won. I, I'm glad I didn't do it. Yeah, Mark. this is much. Yeah, this you is, couldn't do this then, and that's what we need you to be a state rep up there. Where all this. <laughs> uh, but listen, let's talk about your dad. Uh, now, now I knew your grandpa Wolf, well, but, I, but but I never had a chance to meet your dad. Let me. Gra where's the grandpa? Here's my, here's my grandpa Wolf. Here, let's show Grandpa Wolf. And he started a company in 1947, rental business, and he died in 2003. So I, my wife and I, bought the estate, and uh, another couple, uh, Jim and Joanna, bought a bunch of other property down there. I tried to talk to you into buying this property because let me tell you what's happened in the last three years. Alex. I know, Mike. I don't invest. I, I understand. But real estate's a very good investment because... I don't have time to mess with it. The, I, know, I spend more money than I bring in now. Gonzales, you know that? Gonzales, Pretty soon I'll be a popper. Gonzalez is where the first shot of the Texas Independence War I know. happened. And that's where the come and take it flag comes from. That's where my family lives. We were a very, very poor area for 50 years. But in the last three years, Oil. something happened. It's called the Eagle Share, uh, Shell Formation. What's your airpiece in? Gonzalez. And... Uh, we have 100 new millionaires in Gonzales, and we have 300 new millionaires in DeWitt County, which is the county over from us. So here's that here's that article. Yeah, Texas like is now the biggest oil producer in the world. And it's a 30-year deal. We are really booming uh, down in Gonzales now, and I built a motel for the oil people, and uh, it's really doing really good. So you're, you're a regular free market terrorist. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, but, let's show the article here. But when we bought the stuff, it was nearly worthless that's right now you know we're booming uh, i mean it's a boom town you wouldn't believe i mean just truck after truck. you're like boss hog now no i'm they call me the slum lord of gonzalez but that's <laughs> not true i have <laughs> no 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 you went you went and got buildings that were falling out nobody wanted yeah. i have fixed this no that's how it works you build something and everybody's mad at you hundreds and hundreds of thousands of 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 uh, dollars of winning and you know, going to, we got code inspectors now. Because uh, I've been fighting, the, I still fight Alex. I fight the city council. They're in love with each other. They all vote the same way. I, I, <laughs> let me tell you, they tried to outlaw, they tried to outlaw garage sales in Gonzales, Texas. I fought them and fought them and fought them. And now, now they said we can have three a year. But, you know, and then they outlawed horses in town in the city limits. We've had horses for 200 years in town. My wife has a horse. It's the middle of the country. I've been, yeah. yeah. And they tried to outlaw the horses in town. You got to get a permit now to have a horse in town. So, I mean, I've I saw that in the newspaper when you were fighting that. You know, I'm, I'm in We Are Change in San Antonio. I love that group. I love the Peaceful Street Project. I'm still in that group. I'm doing all I can to fight, even though I have a, a business to run like you do. Absolutely. You're doing a great job, Mike. Here, here let me see the rest of the photos of Grandpa Wolf. Oh, and that's my grandma. She died two, uh, two. Well, folks, you want to see the roots of things. Hey, Mike, how ridiculous is it, without getting into names, because I, I don't even know who I'm talking about, you know, just in general, when they say I'm secretly funded by the government. No, it's not And true. I'm secretly Bill Hicks. Alex, and, you are, I mean, what people don't know about Alex, he is a, such a funny guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Bill Hicks, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. but... Uh, it, it, no, I mean, no, seriously, what do you think when they say I'm like I don't Mossad that. agent or Vatican? But well, you saw me from nowhere. They, uh, they call me from, you know... I, if I wanted to out Alex, I could have done that a long time ago. I got major newspapers, major, um, was that magazine that called me that? What would you out me for? You mean if you wanted to make something up? If I wanted to make something up, I would never do that because you, know, you come from a good family. I love your your wife. Your uh, your mother and dad are great people. There's no way that I... But plus, I'm good. That's right. You I mean, come, is there anything? You come from good stock. Well, you do too, Mike. But... 
uh, you know, I, but I do turn into a vampire at night. You know, people want me to go on uh, uh, radio shows about uh, about the Bohemian Grove in my book, and I had one the other day. It was a national show, and all they could try to do was try to uh, talk bad, you know, try to get me to say something bad about Alex Jones. And I told that lady it ain't going to happen, and I told her I told her exactly the way it was that you were a good guy. Well, without defending from the lies, you've seen them firsthand. And they call me from these magazines trying to get me to to say stuff. I just hang the phone up because you know they can take anything you say and and chop it up, and it's just not going to happen. Yeah, but I sit around I, on the internet, and there's not going to be one word of, of me saying anything bad. No, I know, but I mean, have you ever seen anything out there that was true? Is what I'm saying. No, I mean you make mistakes just like the rest of us. You're you're a human being, but that's what we want to see. We want to see you making mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> here, here's something else. Here, here. Let's look at some of these old Texan photos. Here, there's your grandpa. And uh, when did he die? Uh, Two thousand three. Now here, it, it, the, uh, yeah, go ahead. No, my grandma died in two thousand one. He died in two thousand three. He started the business in two thousand. He had a farm. Believe it or not. I could have bought all of Cheapside for about two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's where this oil boom's going on. It's just south of Gonzales. Now it's worth about two hundred fifty billion. So I mean, this is the kind of opportunity that's going on down in in. in Gonzales. I remember you tried to get me. I tried even before you, your grandpa. I tried to get me to buy, buy that because I wanted to <laughs> make it where patriots could go and have. You're like my lucky play. charm. I should have listened to you. <laughs> but uh, but you know, I do have some investors, Jim and Joanna, that. Uh, their listeners of yours that did invest in Gonzalez and bought some of my grandpa's property because I, I didn't buy the whole estate. I just bought a part of the estate and they bought some other houses and those houses went up a lot in value now. And now we got oil people there that have nowhere to go. We got hundreds of people coming into town and nowhere to rent. Again, folks, he is the real Barney Fife in the flesh. <laughs> the good Barney Fife. We love that show, don't we, Mike? Yeah, I do. I like all the old shows. Oh, you're something because else. It, it's, it's, what, it's like what we'd want America to be. All right, now listen, I, I want to get to some other issues here and take some calls. But, Mike, let's talk about your dad here. We got a photo of him. Uh, back when uh, the uh, UT tower shooter was going Before on. we had SWAT teams. Yeah, your dad saved a bunch of people. Let's show this photo right here uh, of uh, Mike's dad, the famous uh, ambulance driver. That was in 1966. I'm not exactly, what was it, the 16th or something? I, I, I don't know, but you've got the paper with your dad in it right yeah, there. Let me see that. Know, and I, I, I saw this at a state sale. Let me see it. Cost me 30 bucks, those papers. But uh, those are hard to get a hold of now. You, you, and there's one, out, uh, Nate, you got the other one out there, I guess. That's the Austin American, yep. and, and then it's the day of death, and then your dad's in here. And then I've interviewed that that, that guy. He's a Texas Ranger now, or a retired Texas Ranger, uh, the Patrolman Romero uh, Martinez. Yeah, yeah, he, he's been on the show, nice guy. Look how young he was, though. And, and he yeah. said it, if it wouldn't be for the citizens that kept... He, uh, with their rifles shooting at them that they wouldn't... Have Can you imagine if citizens, if there was a shooter, were shooting? The cops would probably shoot them nowadays. That, that's right. I'm telling you, well, this country is screwed up. Turned out this guy had a giant brain tumor, the Marine. Mm -hmm. He was just out of his mind. Everyone loved him. I forget who it was in my family here in Austin knew him, too. They said it was... Uh, anyways, uh, Mike, it's, it's, it's really fun having you here. I just wanted to get yeah. you on to talk about some of the... Getting back to Brooksville, because that's what made me think to get you on the show. And I've invited you up, but you never seem to come to Austin anymore to take you out to dinner. Well, because I, I'm... Too I'm busy. In, I'm in Gonzales now. You're boss hog. Once you go to Gonzales, you don't leave. <laughs> Once you go to God, God's country, you don't leave. And, uh, you know, if, if, if some of your people out there... I, I'm not talking about me in general. If you just... If you're looking for investment, you need to go to South Texas, because that's where the boom's going on. And it's still ripe for picking down there in, in South Texas. Here you go, Mr. Businessman. Well, it's it, that's what it's all about. Can I come down there and be Roscoe Pico trained? <laughs> Alex, you're welcome anytime. And, 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 and when your wife and your kids come through, I'll give you a free hotel room too. Oh, and guess what? Uh. I have the bed that Elvis slept in when he came to Gonzales and the bed that... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the bed... I, oh, I wish somebody would go out to my car and get the picture uh, of it, uh, of the motel. And I have the... Um, uh, when Bonnie and Clyde came through town, I have the bed that they slept in, too, at my motel. And, and what's the name of the motel, Hanson? The Wolf Motel. 
It, it's named after my grandpa. <laughs> oh, it's the wolf's yeah. lair, huh? It used to be. It used to be. So it used to. He built them as apartments, and then I built another building as the main part. It's like a country motel, and it's themed as you know, come and take. All right, now let's get back to the new world order. Uh, boy, they sure tried to keep us uh, from uh, getting the word out. But now, imagine, imagine where the liberty movement started. You know, decades ago, but imagine where it is now. Are, are people people don't laugh at you anymore when you're talking about the New World Order, do they? Mike? I know they were listening to your phone calls because they cancel. They would can't. This is the type of stuff they do. They would cancel our reservations to our rent car. We get there and there'd be no rent car for us. They'd cancel the reservation to the hotel. There'd be no hotel reservations. That'd be kind of the one we'd fly over there. And by the way, I hadn't. I have not flown since nine one one, and I won't. So uh, that's one. <laughs> I drive everywhere. Are you going to visit anybody else while you're here in Austin today? No, I'm going straight back. Go right back to business. <laughs> you're a piece of work, man. My, well, maybe my mother. You know, that's that's the, that's the kind of stuff. You know, she paid twenty three thousand dollars for her house in in Travis Heights, nineteen seventy two, and they they knock on her door every day trying to buy it for seven hundred thousand. That's what the real estate market is doing here in Gonzales. I mean, in uh, Austin. You know, she lives in Travis High. Mike, you're like a machine now. All you talk about is like money, 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 uh, money, money. My, my you're money. like Tony Montana. It's it's just fun. It's just, you know, you know, let me tell you. Oh, how it's to fun to be successful? Huh? Let me tell you how to beat the new world order. I'll tell you all how to beat the new world. To Become successful. Be successful and live a good life. Texas Lil told me that. You remember Texas Lil? No, that's an old French saying. The best revenge living well. Yeah. I agree. And we have a travel trailer. We travel. We We, we love it. I mean, I still... How's Melissa doing? We travel, and uh, we love it. You know, we go to the coast. How we're many horses? Going, we're going to the coast for a week next week uh, with our travel trailer. We love our travel trailer. I never thought that I, I would like a travel trailer, but I, I do. Mike, you are a piece of work. You know, I miss you. I'm so glad you're here. Well, we miss you too, Alex, and we miss your wife. You know, I almost came down to Gonzales for the uh, reenactment and all that. Oh, it's... And I, and I just ran out of time. Come and take it. Uh, I think it's the first weekend of October. Yeah, for those that don't know, tell folks, that's where the come and take it thing come comes from. It. That's the first shot before before they went to the Alamo. They they fired a shot over the uh, Texas... No, I know. They, I, they came from on, my, on, on my mom's side of the family, us. I had family live there. It was in it. They come to disarm us in Gonzales, and, and somebody wrote on a wedding dress with a cannon, come and take it, and put it up, and they fired a shot over the, tech, uh, the Mexican army. And that's when they went to San Antonio and uh, later and, uh, uh, you know, killed everybody and lost. Then they sent Susanna Dickerson back with a black slave to tell yeah. Travis that we're coming for y'all next. And so he burnt Gonzalez down. Gonzalez has been burnt down twice. And w once by Travis. And then they went under the... Uh, the oak tree about 14 miles from Gonzales and all got together and then went went down to San Jacinto and won. I know, yeah. Gonzales is very historical. I believe and, me, I know. And and we have been very, I mean, Gonzales has not grown one bit for the last 50 years until we have this oil boom. That's why we're so excited about it. I know, it was, it was like, it was like, or we have, it, it's like Mayberry, stay there, stay there, stay there. Stay there. because there's a war on for your mind. That has been our motto here at InfoWars for my 18 years of battle against the globalist. And now we see the open announcements of global, private, corporate tyranny over our governments. That's what the New World Order is, is an unaccountable private combine of organized crime engaged in corporate takeovers of nation states and the conscious attempt to abolish basic rights and fundamental liberties. Infowars.com is not just leading the charge against this here in the U.S. or North America. We are leading the charge worldwide. And that's because our listeners, our viewers, our supporters, fellow freedom lovers like you across the planet resonate with our message of liberty and telling it like it is. And that's why for the last two years especially, I have thrown everything I've got, my time, my energy, our backup capital, everything into really trying to awaken the sleeping giant that is humanity. And that's why the July issue that just came in a few days ago is so important. We've already sold about half the stock we have of it at cost in groups of 10 up to 100 in bulk. 
It covers the entire NSA spy grid, how it ties in worldwide, how it's not about stopping terrorists, but about suppressing and dominating and controlling the free press and political opposition. And in this magazine, we don't just have three free bumper stickers like I did a few months ago. We have 10 bumper stickers, four full-size ones with amazing messages guaranteed to get people thinking like America has been occupied by globalist forces, Infowars.com. Listen to Alex Jones at Infowars.com. Infowars.com, forbidden information. Listen to Alex Jones, Infowars.com. And then on top of it, six medium-sized bumper stickers with the message as well. These are key to post in legal and lawful areas on your book bag, your computer, your car, or to give friends and family. I have printed 500,000 of these bumper stickers. Only half of this month's run of magazines has them. So when you purchase them in bulk or you're a 12-month subscriber, you will get the special issue. And I can't afford to do this every month, so it's going to be quite a while until we do this again. Please take advantage of this. Buy them in bulk and give them to your friends and family and encourage them to get these bumper stickers out because with 500,000 stickers, we can reach tens of millions of people with the message of truth. They want to collectivize us. They want to bankrupt us. They want to drive us into their arms to control us. They want to dumb us down. But the sleeping giant that is for humanity is awakening. So I want to thank you all for your support. I want to encourage everybody to go to InfoWarsStore.com and to get a 12-month subscription or to give a gift subscription. Imagine 12 of these coming to your friends or family's door to wake them up. Or to give a gift subscription to the local police department or your local congressman or woman. This is how we're going to affect change, voting with our dollars and voting with our time. Again, visit InfoWarsStore.com today to subscribe, to get the magazine in bulk, or to give a gift subscription, or to give yourself a subscription to wake up friends and family. I am all in. I am committed 110% to not mince words and to not back off and to boldly confront the globalist. And our listeners and supporters, our info warriors, who aren't behind us, they're right beside us. So I want to thank all of you that have supported us in the past, and I want to encourage all of you out there who may be on the fence, that know this information is true, but have been scared to take action. You had better be scared of not taking action and letting this monstrous system come to fruition. Now is the time to commit. Now is the time to say which side of history you're on. Now is the time to stand against the globalist and the new world order. And regardless of whether you get this July issue, this July 4th resistance to tyrants issue, spread the word about liberty, resist corruption in your area. Millions of us doing little things can move mountains together. I'm Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com and the InfoWars team. Mike, we're back on air here. <laughs> You're so funny. Yeah, that's a good photo right there. Me, me, and, me and Mike are marveling on, on how fat we've both gotten. <laughs> no, no, you look good. I mean, I've got a little bit of fat. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna lose 50 pounds just because she's. No, no, that. I've gotten a little. <laughs> no, you're saying here, 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 it's folks, for watching on TV. Look at this photo right here. Can we document Cam on this? Look, I, I guess a time the great Avenger. Here, I'll just put it over here. Yeah, there you, you go. You, there you, you have just found a bullet there. We were digging at Waco, and you found some kind of bullet there. And we also found the type of burning um, tear gas rounds they Maybe lied. That's what it was. Lied in Congress said that they didn't have. And again, this book is available at InfoWarsStore.com. It's Bohemian Grove, Cult of Conspiracy, Mike Hansen, forward by Tex Mars. And it is the definitive book uh, on the whole Bohemian Grove and so much more. And you support Mike and you also support us. And, but and, and there's, I, I'd like to say this, Alex. There is so much on the internet and, and out there and people call me up and say that you made this whole thing up about Bohemia Grove. I cannot believe anybody would be that naive. That you didn't go in there. I mean, there's... Well, well I mean, A... A, they either say, we didn't go in there, or they let us in. Yeah, well, that's not true. And then they say, well, why is it there footage of all of it? We'd have to start the little hidden camera yeah. and then put, well, you know, we're going to do some overdrive and take calls, but tell folks what going into Bohemian Grove was really like. For those that don't know, it's like the real eyes wide shut. Well, it was scary as hell. If you wouldn't ask me to do it, I wouldn't have done it. But uh, uh, it's scary. I mean, we could have ended up in jail for a very long time. Well, they've arrested everybody else. Oh, yeah. Why did we make it in and out? Why? I, I seen you on TV not too long ago trying to get in there again. Y'all didn't even make it up the hill. 
No, no, that's I, true. I seen you paddling away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't stop. I, yeah, they all was good. I said, "Go, Alex, go, get out of there." Well, it was a lot worse. Yeah. They cut, the lawyers made them all cut out. What really went on? I'd see. I, I signed that. a non-disclosure. I saw that. I so saw I can't that. tell what else well, happened. But I'm now seeing that they, you just didn't really see anything. Well, yeah, because the police got all the footage. But I think they probably have sensors and everything else uh, way beyond what they had when we were there. Well, there's no think about it. Yeah. The place they used, a theater, Red. to shoot the interviews, they had a bartender that was serving us lunch and stuff, you know, during the taping interviews. And he goes, you know, I actually work there. I hang out with George H.W. Bush, and I don't appreciate what you're saying about them. And I went, what? I'm just saying that weird stuff goes on in here. And he goes, well, I'm not going to call him and tell him you're coming. And I went and told him, I said, that guy's ratting us out. <laughs> and they were, and they're like, no, he wouldn't do that. They were so naive, and they, they were waiting when we got there. And so I said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going in there. I said, I'm going to come right up to the edge, and I watched the cops run down and grab them. And then they told me to stop. I was on the water line. I know the state and federal law. I just ran off. So well, you know, they just recently opened up the LBJ Ranch where you can go into the house and stuff. So I, uh, my my daughter just got married out there last month. So we went into the LBJ Ranch. They had this big from the '60s. They had this this big radar where you, it, it, infrared where they could see if anybody was coming from. That was back in the '60s, Alex. So you can imagine what they have now. The the uh, uh, Secret Service had it on top of their their building, and they 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 would look through the whole ranch and see if anything was moving in the dark. That was in the '60s. So you imagine what they have now. I, oh, I know. I have no idea. It was just, what I tell people on the, you know, when people ask me to come on the radio once in a while, they'll ask me to come on about the book. I said, I think it was just, uh, you know, God that got us in there because I don't see how else we could have got in there and got out of well, there. Well, also, we did place. get questioned by the Secret Service and the oh, sheriffs. Many times. Describe what's many, not on the footage. Many times. I, I, it's all in the book. I, it, See, that's why I wanted to write the book because my memory fades, you know, over the years. Yeah, you wrote it right a few years after. Well, yeah, it took it took three or four years to write the book and to put it together and to uh, pay people to put it together because, you know, I don't think I'm qualified to put a, a book that size together, but it cost, it, yeah. it, it cost about $10,000 to put that book together. Right? I know, it's ghostwritten, but it's your words. Yeah, oh, yeah. everything's in your words. Yeah, I was interviewed, and, yeah. Alex, Alex uh, does a good job in there describing... They can also get the DVD, Dark Secrets Inside Bohemian Grove, with a bonus film, Order of Death, all on the same DVD at InfoWarsStore.com, and your purchase supports us. We're going to come back with a third or fourth hour, and your phone call. Stay with us. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at InfoWars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at InfoWars.com slash show. All right, folks. Uh, my old friend and a guy that, uh, I don't know, I've been at Access TV about a year. I'd go on his show. I'd go on Jeff Davis' show. And I would, uh, you know, work on things with him. And then he started helping me film stuff and run the the TV show and then helped me do stuff with the radio show and then he actually worked and helped oversee the uh, shipping department with myself, Mike, and my wife. Uh, uh, yeah, in the dining room and my dad would come over sometimes and help. No, he, he would help us hook up the order line computer. Yeah. Uh, but Mike, you're awesome and I'm so glad to see the, uh, your American dream just continue to come true and your great kids growing up. We got people holding here. We've been all over the map, but then we will go back to Bohemian Grove. Uh -oh. But I mean, yeah, they had the sheriffs come over and it turned out it was the sheriff and he questioned us, and we said, oh, we're part of the Hillbilly Club. Yeah. And, and, and then we had the Secret Service come over, and we would just be calm. And, and then we ended up in a, I don't know what it was, a, a, a gay dance or something. I don't know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> we, ended, we ended up in this, in this room, and this guy runs up and asked Alex, uh, who are you? And he had, Alex had just reamed me out about, you better not forget your name and this and that. He gave, <laughs> he gave my fake name. <laughs> Okay, my uh, name. Uh, well, yeah, you did. Well, see, we I didn't remember that, and it's even on tape. So we didn't show a lot of the footage because, because yeah, we go in there and it's all these guys like <laughs> dancing around together. Yeah, and they, it's I, all men. I, I forgot about that one. That's that's just good. And, and can I thank my wife of thirty years because she really, really had to put up with all this <laughs> stuff for, for fourteen years. You know, because I wasn't really around. I, I want to thank was, my wife. Yeah, in, in, uh, the, the incredible beauty and and. and the, beautiful. You married a beauty. And the intellect. Yeah. She's so sweet. And she was smart. She was super sweet that's, to me this morning. That's, that's who, you know, got that website going as good as it did with all the, 
you know, because it really started out to be nothing. Well, she's really the brains behind the whole operation. Yeah. So is my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Faisley. Yeah, she does it all. When we have to kick people out, she has to go to court and all that kind of stuff. So she's... she's no, it's good. Yeah, but hey, man's got to have a good woman beside him. Yeah. She's, she's I want to see your kids. But, but, but I, I, I want to thank her because I've never publicly thanked thank my wife. I love her so much that she she stood by us for those 14 years when I worked for you. And I was gone all the time. I was always I was always doing something. Also, good. also, I want to thank my wife. That's right. We love our wife. Here, here we go. Yeah. 30 years. <laughs> 30 years. I married her in 1984. Yeah. No, 84, yeah. You know, I haven't seen your kids, though, in probably five years. They're grown. I have a five-year-old grandson now. You know, I'm raising him. He's my little Latino child. <laughs> That's because you're a racist? I, I, wish, I wish I could have had a little Latino grandson when I ran for office here in South Austin. I could have used him like, you know, Gomez. You know, I, had a, uh -huh. I, I was running against a Hispanic woman, an incumbent. And uh, it, it was very hard, you know, and I had a last name of Hanson and, you know, S South Austin, 60 percent Hispanic. So I, I was an uphill battle there. But, hey, running for office, you educated a lot of people. That's what I tried to do because you had said to do it. So I did it. We were fighting the police tape. Remember the abstinent? Assistance, uh, assistant program, program where they would your kid would miss one day they'd try to arrest him and the penal code come didn't even say house, didn't even didn't even say it was it, it, that's not truancy missing once and they come out and search your house when you miss one day uh, 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 without a warrant yeah and so we put a stop to that for a while I heard they brought it all back again yeah why don't other people fight things why do we have to fight everything well there's I, I, I actually I think there's people down there now you know what I'll tell you a good story, Alex. You know, my wife used to work at the Travis County. I, I met this woman at, at my daughter's wedding that says that they all believe, you know, because we used to go down there almost every Tuesday. And now all those people that work there believe everything, you, say, you know, everything that you said when you went in there, they know is true now. So they're all... Oh, yeah, Elshire. We went to the former there. county judge. We went to his house. He's a listener and now is awake. So they... they Remember Elshire? You know what you were saying back then is true now, and uh, they're all listeners. Hold on. We're going to be right back with your phone calls. I promise. I promise. We're going to Huge Whistle. That doesn't sound too nice. And other people. Who's that? I don't know. It's one of the callers up there. All right. It's friends with Kate Upton. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. Mike, I really should have gotten you in here to tell the story about your dad being one of the heroes, uh, driving him while his vehicle got shot up, getting people off the street and saving them whenever they had the uh, tower shooting uh, back in 1966. What was that, on August 1st? Yeah, I think it was. Is that what it says? Yeah, well, that was, it's August 2nd was the Austin American yeah. Statesman, but um, yeah, it says yesterday it happened. So, yeah, a bloodbath gushed over Austin in the University of Texas Monday, leaving 15 persons dead and 31 others wounded at the hands of a lone gunman who made a arsenal fortress of the university tower. The 90-minute mass slaughter that brought this city to its knees ended only when the city police officers gunned down Charles Joseph Whitman, a 25-year-old student. Besides himself, Whitman's uh, carnage left dead his wife, his mother, and 13 persons on the campus. I'm trying to remember, who is it knew him? Was it my uncle knew him? Uh, or was it my grandfather? He, he, he lived right over by where your parents do. Not uh, a couple blocks from where your parents live. 
Yeah, I know. I know. I'm, I'm, you know, memory, as soon as the show's over, I'll remember yeah. who it was he knew in my family. Alex, nobody has a memory like you. Oh, no. I had a lady on yesterday. He's got one of. Oh, yeah. That lady. Mary Lou Henner, a thousand times better. I remember where she was five days ago or something. Well, I mean, me and my dad were talking about that last night. If, like, if I sit and think about even a day, like a year ago, I can, like, go back and find it. But it's like finding it in a filing cabinet. With her, it's like, bam, she just knows right where it's at. But uh, there was some kind of inside thing with it. I, I forget. It's really weird. It's like my grandma knew LBJ's hitman. Is your grandparents still living? Uh, my grandmother, yeah. The, all the rest are dead. Oh, they were so nice. Yeah, yeah. And when they tried to uh, find them or yeah, 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 they all that in well, the back. Well, yeah, they told them they had to clean out <laughs> the the creek Cranky. behind her house. And my grandmother looked at the plats and stuff, and. And, and said, well, I already paid drainage fees. That creek's not my property. And so they sort of giving him the $1,000 day fines. And I said, let me fight it for you. And he goes, no, I'll fight it. And then he got, and he was like almost 80 years old. He climbed over. She's like 90 now, or about to be 90. He climbed over, did it all, had a heart attack, and then was in the hospital, heart surgery, then had a stroke, and then died a year later. The, basically, the city of Austin killed my grandfather. Yeah. Because he just, well, I'm not going to sue him. I, like a slave, he climbed back in the creek, and with a handsaw, should have just told me to do it, or I said, our company, he chopped up all these trees and stuff that weren't even ours mm. in a creek. Of course, that's Austin's scam. They just send old people. Uh, uh, like they did Mr. Capanna. They, they basically... Uh, Roland Ellingson, whatever happened to him? I, I went over to the house, you know, where we did... That interview's up on, on Mike Hansen Archives. Yeah. When you... It was a bunch of them, though. $2,000 $2, fines for eight-inch grass or, or something. Three-inch like grass, yeah. And uh, that interview's up there. And I went over to uh, to the house where he lived, and some Chinese lady answered the, answered the door, a yuppie kind of... You know, it's all turned yuppie land. And, and, and they were giving him uh, fines, admitting, we want your house. And then I, I, Chris Ritter told me that he died a couple of years ago of cancer. So I, I think he's gone, too. Yeah, he was fighting colon cancer. Joe Capan has gone, too. Yeah, he died. And... Um, our our great engineer that helped us on all these projects. George Pullin. He, he's dead. And then the carpenter helped us uh, too. Um, uh, God, my memory. What is his name? Uh, a lot of carpenters. Well, the the carpenter just died. Uh, God, I, I can't remember offhand. What is his name? The but all this was while we were getting orders from the Vatican. Yeah. We were ordered to do all this by the... Yeah, well, Alex, I know that none of, none of that stuff is true that I see on the internet. I mean, people can just make up anything and put it on the internet now. That's the problem. You know, you, you don't know what to believe. But I'm telling you that I've been with you uh, 18 years ago when you started, and you are a good person. You oh, I know that, Mike. I, uh, listen, they do that for jealousy, but also to change the subject. Some of it's COINTELPRO, government... Cass Sunstein cognitive dissonance stuff, but my only issue is knowing me from day one at Access Television when I was in the control room by myself. I mean, it's just pe people are like, where'd he come from? You know, he just showed up he on the scene. The, he was in the cable cast just sitting there. Yeah, yeah, but I'm the opposite of coming from nowhere. Everybody knows who I am. You know, they've gone to Rockwall. Bob Hooper is his name. Oh, really? Yeah, you know Bob Hooper. Yeah. The one that had the white He truck. died? Yeah, he died around the same time that uh, uh, Pulliam died. Oh, he was a nice guy. Yeah. He was from Wisconsin. Yeah. No, no, but expanding on that. He was an expert. They've father. gone and gotten my high school yearbooks at Anderson and at Rockwall. Trying to prove I'm not who I say I am. And then when they find the proof, then they say that person's a fake. Yeah. Which is kind of a nice thing. I can't find my ma my, my uh, But there are annuals. other Alex Jones out there they mix you up with sometimes. Oh, that's how I got. Yeah. That's how they started saying I was a Vatican assassin. And another thing is Catholics think they're great people. And do, you know, well, just because you go speak at a, at a Catholic school for your, do uh, for your sister does not mean that. Yeah, a, a college, yeah. I mean, it's crazy. No, no, but the whole point, that's where she got a scholarship. But separate from that, I'm saying Catholics are great people. The whole point is, is that there was a, a black, famous black guy named Alex Jones who's some Catholic evangelist and and i got a call they go say you didn't write this book this is about 10 years ago and i said i didn't write that book i've written a book about catholics i'm not catholic and they go well you will have us on to denounce the catholics or we will expose you as one and i said i said what's this book and i go look it up it's a black guy <laughs> like 70 years old and i call the guy up and i go I, is this a joke <laughs> and he goes no i'm going to expose you
And that's where that all comes from, because there's a black guy named Alex Jones. You were talking the other day yeah. on your radio about how things happen, you know, things happen to you, and you know they listen to your call. You know, I think they listen. Sometimes they even listen to our calls, and then they feed our wife informa bad information, and then they get mad at us. You know, they do that. Oh, well, that, well, that happens all the time. They, they've the woman calls up and goes, "Hi, I'm calling for Alex. Well, who's this? Oh, this is his fiance. I'm pregnant." Yeah, and that, I mean that's happened a lot. You know, that's yeah standard procedure. But I mean, you know, it don't happen to me. I'm not. I I don't go on the uh, on the radio as much as you do and stuff. I can imagine what you go through. Just what I have to go through, just from people calling me up trying to trying to uh, get me to say something bad about you. It's just not going to happen. Uh, uh, that one famous uh, let uh, no more no more gossip. I didn't get you on here about that. I got you on here about your book, Bohemian Grove, Cult of Conspiracy. Let's go ahead and go to the next person. Let's go to uh, Huge Whistle. Thanks for holding, Huge Whistle. You're on the whistleblower. I guess. Okay. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, whistleblower. That's what it. What uh, what put it your said. earpiece in, Hanson. Oh. Show him how, folks. Okay. Well, this he's, is, he's too busy. Y'all have, so, have so much. He's too, he's too you know. busy driving big black Cadillacs. Yeah. I have a black truck now. I know. I'm joking yeah. around. It's Boss Hog. Go, yeah. go. You're on the air with Boss Hog. Go ahead. You're a good Boss Hog. Yeah, I I met somebody that. Uh, his grandfather went to Bohemian Grove every year, so if people want to say that's not real, then, you know. But that's not really what I called up about. I called up about Flight 214. If you just count the windows from the front door on the still picture where they show the people getting off the plane, there are six windows. As you count, six windows look straight down where it says Asiana Airlines, and you'll be right above the eye. If you look at the footage of the first responders, you'll count seven windows, and you'll be above the eye. What are you saying? That it's not real. I mean, amateur shot it's video. It's not the same. It's not the same plane. There's two different planes there. The grass is like three feet high when the people are getting off that plane. There are yellow tags under the doors on the video footage. That's the first responder footage. There are no yellow. Well, tags. I'm going to say this. I think the Boston bombing happened, but it was staged uh, clearly. Uh, but it, people were probably hurt. Same thing with Sandy Hook, because they'll kill real people. But you look at the spokespeople, they're clearly acting. There's some fake stuff. And I saw some people with all their clothes blown off with no damage to their skin, but shrapnel holes. And you can see their actors. And they did that on 7-7. But because I was there days after it happened, I flew to England. And what happens is they blew up real people, but then they have fake people to then be the celebrity victims who are inserted. I'm telling you, they do it. And that came out in Operation Northwoods, mm -hmm. that they would stage planes crashing and have actors and stuff. So so that's a real thing they do. Uh, Mike, your take on all that. Well, uh, I just listened to you, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> oh, man, I tell you, Mike Hanson. I, I, I think this last deal they pulled is just trying to divide us, uh, you know, divide the people. I heard you come on when I was coming in today about the uh, the Trayvon Martin garbage. That's just to divide and conquer. And you've always said that divide and conquer, and that's what they're trying to do. So I think the media is like that. They just Barney Fife meets Han Solo meets Boss Hog. What's that about? That's you. You're the Lord, though. Lord Alex. Oh, and I call <laughs> the, the police Lord this, Lord that. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Well, I've I've worked very very hard for the last couple of years to 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 build up what we have down there, and and to have somebody come in to try to extort money off you and us, and it's just not going to happen. What about what about when Obama says you didn't build that? <laughs> no, my grandpa built it. Uh, uh, no, but you've maintained it and expanded it. He, he Remember Obama making the comment about you, know, you didn't build they, that? They they want to talk about people that you know they want to do recycling and everything. My grandpa tore down old, he went to the dump ground when I was growing up and got lumber and tore down old houses and built all this this business up from the ground up. So uh, You mean Obama didn't build it? No, Obama didn't do it. He, 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 he did us. My grandpa was so cheap when we were growing up, he would slam the brake on for a aluminum can on the highway and almost throw us through the, throw us through the window. Hold on, we're going to skip this break. For us to we're going to skip this break. Hold on. Final segment. Good job, guys. Thank you. Uh, huge whistle. You're blowing a huge whistle here. What are you getting at, sir? Well, it's just like your other guest you had on, uh, Anthony. Was, wasn't he uh, referencing Allie Stevenson, the UM coach that was talking about the bomb drills? Yes. 
Okay, well, when I saw the picture of that guy, because they showed a still frame of him, he's on the phone talking to the media about it. I'm like, this guy looks familiar. If you look at the picture of the Richards family, look at the dad. And you never see, you never get to hear an actual live interview from that Richards family. It's always statements. God bless you. We'll look into it. You know, I'll tell you this. When they can go to somebody's house and shoot the suspect in the top of the head and then say nobody can see the autopsy, and then it turned out the FBI wasn't injured, they didn't, and then they, two FBI guys that were involved in the arrest of uh, Zohar end up dying, and then uh, some of our associates, uh, well, it's Holland, Holland Van den Neuenhoff, one of his best friends, was one of the SWAT team guys in on that. And now he's been told don't talk to him. And then Rob Dew's brother-in-law is on the Army Marathon team and minutes before gets pulled out and told, you're dehydrated. And he's like, no, I'm not. You're going to the hospital so he wouldn't be bombed, I guess. And then you add the drill and you add the cover-up and you add the, the uh, uh, Tamerlan, uh, the older brother being part of the CIA. That's on record. He was sent overseas under aliases. I mean, this is definitely a staged event. Well, I think you were right, what you've always said, stay public. That's, I, that's why you stayed alive so long, because you're public. And the first thing you did when we snuck into Bohemia Grove is get that video out to everybody. That's the first thing you did. Remember that? And, and, but, but, but remember three times they got into the mail and were erasing the tapes we were sending to the... To the uh, you sent it out to everybody. Absolutely. You sent it out to everybody on the Internet. And the Internet wasn't like it is now then you know that's 13 years ago but it was good enough to get it out there and you got it out there quick to everybody and that's why i think they didn't kill you well we got death threats over that and and three times they copied the tape there they're expert people camera to camera checked it was good they mailed it a race they said you mind mailing this to world of wonder in la the production company again make the copy mail and they go that's that's that, there's that's a blank tape and i said um I said, uh, so I sent it again, wiped it again. And then finally, we sent it to England, wiped again. And then uh, I used somebody that worked with us, their address to mail it to a crew member of World of Wonder, and they got it at their house. So they were getting in the mail to get that. They were not happy about that. It, 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 I'm glad you got it out there when you did, because I, th I think they could they could have... Uh, of wiped us all out before we got out of California, but we got out of there. We went to San Francisco. Sure, sure. I mean, we did put like a two-minute clip up just to show it happened, but yeah. they, they did not want the full footage. What they didn't want was the faces. Yeah. But I'm not stupid. I'm not going to... I'm not going to show the faces of the of the men dancing together or whatever. Well, it was hard to see the faces because uh, of where we had... Well, our, uh, I do have footage somewhere around here. I mean, I mean, because it was it was hour-long tapes, but only, but I could only reload twice. I had to get it out of the hidden bag. Well, I had to reload in the bathroom, remember? Absolutely. And, and, and I sent you in there because... And, and they kept saying, what's he doing in the bathroom? So long? I couldn't figure out. It was, that that little tape was hard to put in there. Yeah, that was a hidden camera. And we were up in the woods. Uh, a absolutely. At, at, the, at, the, um, at the camps. Absolutely. Well, then I said, we've been questioned twice. No, three times. I said, let's go hide, and, and, and we were able to do it. And because by the they way, they were all at dinner. They were all at dinner. And by the way, then Danny Glover walks by as it's almost dark. You want to hear about racism? Yeah, I remember. And all these old men are going, "What's that?" Because I, I think the average age was like eighty. I mean, it, these people are. Hey, that's what's really gross about it, these old men dancing around together. The point is, I mean, sorry, it's gross, folks. Hugh Hefner with a woman's gross. It's just disgusting. The point is, is that is that they're going, "What's that doing here?" And I mean, that's all I heard was, <laughs> "I was like, what?" The? So I, I mean, I, I guess that's who you'd expect that from. But uh, but that's when they were all having dinner and at, at the at the dining hall. We didn't have a place to sit, so we had to get out of there. Yeah, but just 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 thirteen years later, all those guys are dead, and I'm told now there's a bunch of black people there. But that was like the old guard. Yeah. What do you think the average age was there? Like eighty? Uh -oh. It was. There was no young people. We were. We were the youngest. I think. Well, that's why the the uh, the greens workers were whistling at us. How old was you thirteen years ago, Alex? I was. Uh, I don't know about look. I mean, I mean, we both looked like you know handsome. So that's why. Remember, were we being whistled at by the by the greens yeah. people? I'll be fifty this this month. I'll, I'll be forty here in real quick. Yeah. But but I mean, well, once but, you get to but 40, we figured out easy. why we were able to get there. Do you remember the old men whistling at us? Oh, yeah. And the uh, yeah. describe that. But, but but in the book, I I say I took advantage of that because you know I wanted to be protected. I didn't want to be caught. So we took advantage of that from the very start to get on the bus, the Al bus, 
Uh, yeah, but we didn't like take advantage of it. Like no, uh, but we the if you look at the guards, how they looked at us, they thought we were prostitutes for these. No, no, we figured that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go back and look at the tape and look at that guy the way he looks. Oh, I know. I yeah. Uh, I mean, it's like <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's really like they were all a bunch of Pepe Le Pews. But you know, when I when I do a couple interviews once in a while, once a couple. Of, times a year on the Bohemia Grove, and I always tell people, don't try to get in there because we don't want, I don't want to see anybody go to jail. I don't think, I don't think you could do it again. I, I think it'd be too hard to hey, do it again. one, Humphrey tried to do it. One reporter fun. got Mark Dice and myself, a, a guy I met a few times. He, he went, worked there, shot footage, got it out. They set him up, uh, and I saw the court case. They sent me copies. It was in the news. He, uh, they, uh, they got him saying that he was like a child molester, and then in the court, it was that a neighbor kid had seen him in his underwear across the apartment hall, uh. and that, and that he tried to show kids a child sacrifice, and the footage was him handing out the DVD of Dark Secrets Inside Bohemian Grove, and they got a jury to convict him for that. Uh. So, so look, that's what they want to do to how people. Much, how much time did those people that you tried to sneak in with last time get? Did they get any time out of that, or did they? Get in trouble for it? No, they agreed to shut up and to, and to give the footage over. Uh, I mean, all they did was yeah. go in, and, yeah, and and then I said, "Look, I'm telling you, they're waiting on us. I'm not doing it." And I was waiting down there at the gorge. I wasn't going to go past the water line. And yeah. then here come the security guards with police, and they're like, "You stop!" And I'm like, "No, I'm not. I've done nothing." So I went and jumped in the water and swam down, and then got to our boats and left. Yeah, I saw you paddling. And then the yeah, cops were looking for me too there. So then I swam over. Uh, and then called uh, Aaron Dykes was there, had him pull the, the uh, pull the suburban we had rented over. I think it was Aaron I took with me. It all blurs, man. I'm telling you. Let's go to a phone call here. This is an insane interview today, Hanson. Uh, constitutional terrorist, you're on the air. Go ahead. Thanks for having me, Alex. I really appreciate it. Thank you, brother. I just want to tell everybody that's listening that I am alive and I'm going to scream right now. Yeah! Yeah! Baby. <laughs> Thank you. Alex, you woke me up. I'm glad. This has been a great show today. A little lighter than usual. Not as much yelling and not as much intensity, but still chock full of information. I need to talk to all the listeners. I want everybody to know we are the resistance. You need to go out to your people, to your community, and you need to speak to people and let them know that you're alive. I get choked up talking about this because I understand the depth of what's going on. I see it. Other people see it, but they cower. You know? You need to stand up, you need to shake your fist, and you need to be defiant against someone that was to oppress you every time. You need to say no, or else your silence is your consent. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, God bless you, and I appreciate your call. Let's go to another caller here. Mike, you want to say something? Yeah, uh, my, my wife's grandma is 94 years old. We just, we just got her down to Gonzales in a nursing home, and, and I go out there to visit her and stuff, and I see all these old people laying around, and uh, you got to do what you can before you end up in that place because they got them all drugged up in there, and, and nobody knows anything. They, I think that you need to fight where you can, work where you can, and live a good life. That's what uh, I'm doing. I've been doing that for a couple of years. Absolutely. You know, I was thinking about Bohemian Grove. While we were there five hours, a couple of us just hiding out in the woods behind a cabin because they kept questioning us, and I didn't want to try our luck. You would, it'd be like snapshots. Guys would walk by going, we got a great deal transferring those nuclear reactors. I'm telling you, the such and such, and then they, they, they'd walk off. Or, or, or the, they were all going to the owl to watch the ritual, big throngs of men and like Danny Glover. They go, that's that Glover. What the he doing here? It's I, mean, really I mean, it was like snapshots of the weirdness. Or, or we go into one camp because we need to use the bathroom. There's like 100 guys drinking wine, dancing together. But, I mean, it was just bizarre. But being, around, being up to that owl, you, you really can't tell what it is when you're up there. But remember the altar? They had a, the real altar up there where they, they sacrifice. Yeah, absolutely. In effigy or if it's real. Look, I apologize to Mike, Robert, and Melissa. You can call in tomorrow. I got to go to retransmission now. We've done uh, three and a half hours. Mike, it is so good seeing you, man. Alex, great to see you again and tell your lovely family I said hi. Yeah, and I wasn't even thinking of this. A lot of the tapes of the show and stuff or when the police and the Klan threaten to kill us. I think we need to get tapes You're like that. you get it all. Well, what? I just tell you guys put it up on your Mike Hansen channel. It's just in a big... In I know. Room. Well, listen, I'm going to send the guys down to get it, and then we'll copy it and give it back to you. But great job to the crew today. Great job to everybody. Now you can watch the InfoWars Nightly News streaming live as it happens for free.
Check it out at infowars.com forward slash show.